What's up, people? This is the People's Podcast presented by the Wrestling Republic. It's your boy, Young Michi, a.k.a. Scooney Mac, a.k.a. Uh, Young Twiggy, a.k.a. the Bay Area YouTuber and the Bay Area wrestler. And my co-host is... It's the B slipping in the East. But I got a question, bro. Who calls you Young Twiggy? Young Ooh. Twiggy. If we, if we go back in the day, uh, my cousins, my cousin Billy... My cousin, I'm pretty sure my cousin Billy, my cousin Corn, and uh, R.I.P. to my auntie Teen. I'm pretty sure they the ones that kind of came up with that. Billy and Corn, Cornelius, right. Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> Shout out to them, my cousin Corn and sh- my cousin Billy. Matter of fact, they be watching some of these, you know, clips and stuff too. So shout out to them. That's what's up. Yeah, Young Twiggy. But let us start off, man. Let's start off with some trending topics, y'all. Um, and I appreciate everybody's support. I know y'all been tuning in to all these different clips, all the different podcasts and all that type of stuff. Um, so I appreciate y'all tuning in. But let us start off with this. Ava Reigns, The Rock's daughter, Simone Johnson, is now has now made her NXT debut with the schisms. Tell me your thoughts on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely surprised because I actually like read a couple of articles where she was just like, she don't want to be in the rock shadow. And then she was also leaning towards not wanting to be a wrestler and being more of a model. And I was like, all right, that's what's up. So I am genuinely surprised she's getting in the ring and she's going to probably be a go out there and do some things. I wish the best for her. And I think the, her not going in under like the rocks moniker or anything related to him, I think is the better move is just that that. Is that she looked dead on her daddy, so she can't escape the uh, <laughs> she can't escape the comparisons. But you know, I hope she can go out there and do her thing and you know carve her own path. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of it's kind of hard to live up to somebody like her father. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's kind of easy when you had like you know Randy Orton and Cowboy Billy Bob Orton. You know, Randy just kind of eclipsed them. Hmm. So you know that's just how it is, man. It's almost like Charlotte Flair going into wrestling after rick flair who's dang near considered the goat by all of the people we consider the goats like stone cold the rocks all of the legends they look at rick flair as the goat and charlotte flair had to you know start her career path in wrestling after you know rick flair and everything he did so in the same way i wish nothing but the best for ava reigns um, she seemed like she got pretty good promo skills just from it was a quick promo. It wasn't too much, but um, seemed like she got pretty good promo skills. It's going to be a lot to live up to because for, it's The Rock. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you're The Rock and you're a part of the Samoan bloodline. That's uh, kind of going hard right now in the WWE. Man, like the bloodline is controlling the WWE right now at the top of the mountain. But in the same way, it kind of gives you a chance to. It gives you a chance to try to live up to it. Like at the same time, I don't know. Like it's gonna be a lot to live up to being the Rock's daughter, or live up to you know trying to eclipse the Rock. But you're also in that position to do it. So I don't know. It's gonna be a lot, especially. I mean, it's the Rock. The Rock is freaking Black Adam right now. <laughs> Black Adam, top of that man. He's almost in every action movie or big budget action movie every year. It's like you can't escape that man's face, man. You just can't. Since we already talking about that, tell me your level of disappointment if The Rock doesn't come back for WrestleMania against Roman I won't Reigns. be that disappointed mm. because at least we now know that Cody Rhodes is getting slotted in that spot. Mm. It's the way I look at it is like this. It's a win-win in the scenario, you know what I'm saying? The Rock comes back, win. If Cody Rhodes wins and he goes into WrestleMania and beats Roman, win. We don't lose no matter what. Yeah, we don't lose. We don't lose. I mean, I'll be I ain't gonna lie, I'd be a little disappointed though, just because it's so it's it's like it's right there. It's right there, Rock. You it's freaking WrestleMania's in Hollywood. And then not only that, I'm planning on being there too. So I'm like, if we can have that showdown between the Rock and Roman Reigns while the Roman Reigns is at the top right now, because what's typically what's been happening, especially like with boxing, I would say with boxing, is the matchups we want to see, it tends to happen at the wrong time. <laughs> um oh, yeah. so I feel like with Roman Reigns being in his 
complete prime. The man, he's at the he's the freaking head of the table right now. The Rock, it'll be a perfect time for them to do that match in Hollywood too. So it's like, come on now, Rock, just yeah. make that return. Well, we do know from like a report from like six, six, three months ago actually that they said right around WrestleMania time, The Rock has three months where he's not doing anything. Mm. So this is the I think it is gonna happen, but we just have to wait and see. But like I said, man. I wouldn't be mad if we got to see Cody Rhodes and Roman in the ring. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad about that either. Because there, if there's one other person to be able to, you know, take out Roman Reigns to end his championship reign, I think Cody Rhodes is that guy. So The only thing I'm fearful of, though, if it's Cody Rhodes versus – if it's Cody Rhodes versus Roman – it's going to be an overbooked mess, and I guarantee you there's going to be, like, run-ins from everybody and in between. I guarantee you Drew McIntyre is going to probably show up. Brock Lesnar is probably going to show up. Uh, um, probably Jimmy or Jay is going to, you know, backstab him. I'm guaranteeing you it's going to be, like, uh, how do they – how what was that dude called? Brutus, which is the word where the word brutality comes from, where they all just ganged up on one dude. Mm. So that's what's probably going to happen to Roman. Mm, what? Think speaking about that, it's like what where are they going right now with the Sami Zayn storyline too? Like, uh, is that gonna you think it's gonna culminate with uh Jay versus Sami Zayn at like WrestleMania or something like that? Or them turning on Roman? I could kind of see that. I could see that. It's, 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 a, it's a possibility. I'd really like to think that it's gonna be one of those things where I'm not gonna be in the bloodline. If he's here, so we're gonna have a match. Whoever winner loses, <laughs> winner. I mean, win, whoever loses has to get kicked out the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? All I gotta say is, once Roman does lose, I feel like he just. I feel like you should just let him take some time away, including the whole entire bloodline. Like even the Usos, I feel like they should just all take some time away, be gone for a couple months, and then come back and wreck havoc again. You want to when do you want them to come back? SummerSlam, Rail Rumble, Survivor Series. Boy, Rumble will be a Chamber. long time. That's a dang near whole year. I don't know dang. if being gone that long, but like um maybe like a a SummerSlam. A SummerSlam would be pretty cool. I think if they was able to come back at SummerSlam, that would that would that would that would work. That would work. Give Cody Rhodes some time. This is if Cody Rhodes wins. And and if this is the match, you know, that happens, like Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Give Cody Rhodes some time. Allow him just to, you know, become, you know, take the the take the business under his hands, create his own reign, and then Roman comes back with the bloodline like at SummerSlam. Then okay. What? One thing I got to interject with is, man, it's a good time to be watching wrestling. Everybody's popping off. God dang. It's going off right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's going... Did you see Nikki Cross return too? Oh, yeah. I was very, I was really hoping that superhero gimmick would end, and I'm glad it finally ended. I just didn't like, you know, how it had to happen on a Bianca Belair match, but hey, I'm not complaining much. <laughs> <laughs> complaining much. <laughs> They finally, yeah, it seemed like Triple H is like, yeah, let's end that little superhero character. Bring back the crazy Nikki Cross again. What I, what I hate about the internet wrestling community, they'd be like, the Nikki Cross character was great. This is her most successful. I mean, we could have done the same thing with the previous character. Mm. So, and then on top of that, if I'm not mistaken, she beat Rhea Ripley for it. So I'm like, come on now, dog. Like. Who, 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 who's who's writing this man who, who needs to get slapped up <laughs> i gotta say this too since we were already talking about the the internet the wrestling world internet community like why are they so hard on dominic mysterio like i was just i was uh dominic mysterio recently cut a promo where he talking about basically he's the he's the uh new generation of eddie guerrero and then he kind of you know he was going off you know he was doing the heel work he was doing the heel work and then i looked in his comment section when he posted it on his instagram and everybody in the comment section on instagram and on youtube was like you're trash, Dominic. Like that was a terrible promo. All these different things. And I was like, dang, it wasn't even hey, a bad promo. Hey. Think of it like this. He got them talking. He got them talking. He oh. got them views. He has their attention. Yeah, but I don't hey, know. Man. I don't know if that's He's the right type of attention though. No, no, no. Here's the thing, right? 
The one thing I've learned through the like the era of CM Punk or the missing era of CM Punk right on WWE, which was like 2015 to 2018, right? Mm-hmm. If you got these guys making noise and you're getting their attention still, hey man, you still got you still got them where you want them. And right now, I think Dominic Mysterio is is, uh, is moving in the right direction. But the one thing I can't stand about in the internet Reddit wrestling fans though. If you don't blow their mind or have consistent five star matches in their minds, it's like they're just gonna keep shitting on you, dog. They're just gonna keep throwing you under the bus every single time. I feel like, I feel like, because to me, when I look at Dominic Mysterio, I'm like, I actually think he's a good young talent. Like to me, of course, he got to put in more work, but I'm like, shoot, allowed him to put the work in, man. Like he ain't. This is. You you don't become a superstar overnight, and I'm like, oh, yeah. dang, they don't. I feel like a lot of wrestling fans don't be giving people a chance sometimes. I'm like, Dominic Mysterio actually got potential. I mean, look at Veer. People they hype them up for months, and then people don't even watch his match. It's just like, come on now. I think I think what it really is is this like, this is why it's kind of important to go to the indies and build up a little bit of a reputation, then go into the WWE. Because at least at that point, you already have like a, a a conglomerate of people who are willing to like watch you for you, and then you already have these stand base where they're really d- willing to defend you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Calm down, wrestling community. Like, calm down, y'all. Dominic Mysterio is not even down. like man. He ain't he ain't trash. There like, are there are wrestling fans still complaining about the Montreal screw job. They are never gonna calm down about anything, Doug. The Montreal screw job. Dang. I feel like we gotta do almost a one podcast where we just kind of talk about that and just break that down. Hey. hey man. Hey man, we get to talk about that better old man Bret Hart again. <laughs> oh man, do you ever see what it's like when Bret Hart talks about uh Goldberg? I have seen that. It's like, God dang. <laughs> I understand he gave you the concussion, but Jesus Christ. I recently just watched uh I watched or rewatched um the interview with Stone Cold at Bret Hart when uh Bret Hart was on the Broken Skull sessions with Stone Cold. And um yeah, he brought it up then. He brought it up then. Even in that he was like he's like, Man, that's the worst like wrestler basically of all time is well, Cold. To be fair, that man was all hype and all trash, man. I kinda agree with them on that. He asked Goldberg to wrestle a 15 minute match or a 10 minute match, man. Good, good luck, <laughs> man. Speaking of Goldberg, do you want to see Goldberg versus no. Braun Breaker at WrestleMania? I mean, of course, if Braun Breaker going over, hell yeah, I'll watch that. I think at some point though, Goldberg got to start putting up these W's again though, because I I don't want him to just keep getting brought. I'm back. surprised you want to see him still wrestle. That's the real thing, man. I mean, I I mean, I'm a Goldberg fan since I was a kid, so it's kind of it just the allure still is still pretty dope. It's still pretty dope when that when that when that uh entrance music hit, and then you know, <laughs> I'll give you that. There are like a lot of people I know who like who ain't never watched a day of wrestling in their life, but they'd be like Goldberg. I'm like, God dang, I hate you all. That but entrance is, music hit, that security start knocking on the door. It brings back that kid. It's like, dang, I remember I guess, that. Yeah, I guess for me, though, since I grew up watching Austin, I kind of looked at Goldberg as like a ripoff, which he kind of is. But, you know, that's besides the point. Braun Breaker versus Goldberg. Goldberg recently said that Braun Breaker reminds him basically of him. He's like he's hitting people with spears. He's jackhammering people. And, you know, he reminds Braun Breaker reminds him of uh, himself. You know, it, I think I seen a comment. And people was like, if Bret Hart, Bret Hart would think that would be the worst comment anyone could say or something like that. That's one of the worst because you know, let's look at it like this: a Goldberg matches him stomping around the ring a couple times, and then after that, he's gonna you're gonna throw some weak offense at him. He's gonna reverse it, and then he's gonna hit you with a spear, stomp around a little bit more, hit you with a jackknife powerbomb, and call it a day. It's literally worse than John Cena's five moves of doom. Like, what are we doing? Five moves of doom. <laughs> oh yeah, you when you saw those moves come out, man, you knew it was a rap, man. Just throw it away, dog. You lost. GGS F seven. Throw it up. 
Man, Goldberg, shout out to Goldberg, man. I'm 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 expecting Goldberg to come back one more time. He gonna do something eventually. I, I expect to see that match against him and Braun Breaker, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But before we get that match, can we get Goldberg with a win? Cause it's like, oh. dang, like he, I mean, he got a win over Bobby Lashley. So what, what more do you want? He he got to get it. Oh. Well, I mean that that win was so long ago. What was that last year, Crown Jewel? Like, what? yeah, it's fine. Let him take another three more L's that I consider a win. Take a W <laughs> and then face Braun Breaker and put Braun Breaker over. Put him over, I think. Uh, let this be like a big, impactful, strong match where Goldberg just looks old and slow. L. Oldberg just getting bodied by Braun Breaker. That'll make my day. 30 minute squash match. I love it. Oh, shoot. 30 minutes. You know that match would not be no 30 minutes. <laughs> hey, man. I don't care if they put on CZW and we got them going through claw, fluorescent light tubes and barbed wire. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> man. I got another one for you. I seen people was debating this. Mm. Who had the best comeback? Uh, and I believe this year. Dang. Did CM Punk actually come back this year, earlier this year? Or was that last year? I believe that was last year. Last year. Okay. So who had the best return? CM Punk or Bray Wyatt? And people was really discussing this. And I was like, Punk. how this is even a Punk is un- undoubtedly. In fact, we could here's the thing I can tell you about Punk. On every graph scale and even every single type of uh chart we're gonna pull from, Punk popped the rating, Punk br- uh, Punk. Bro, uh, bro, uh, broke the internet like literally almost getting like what almost a million views and likes and stuff Bray Wyatt came back he, it kind of came and gone like nobody really cared mm. when Punk graced graced AEW television again it was a wrap yeah so the best way I can look at that is hey man we had a Bray Wyatt had a great comeback CM Punk had an epic comeback. People were waiting and anticipating. And then he went into a great storyline with M- with MJF, which helped elevate both their careers. So it's just like, all right. But now we got Bray Wyatt back. We don't know what he's done. And on top of that, like I said, man, you know, nobody really cared that much for Bray Wyatt to come back. I yeah. think the Bray Wyatt fanboys were just great. They were popping off really hard for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was like, I don't know how this is even a discussion. CM Punk's oh, yeah. return, it was epic. The man was gone from wrestling for some years. Bray Wyatt was only gone for, you know, a short period of time, maybe a year. But I'm two, like two years. Like, two it was years. two years. It was two years. So I'm like, shoot, like he was only gone for a little bit of time. Like to me, I didn't feel like he was gone that long. So I'm like, CM Punk, it almost made it seem like he wasn't ever gonna return. So I'm like that I don't even know how this is even a discussion. CM Punk's was just epic. Um, I feel like a better discussion is almost who had the better return, CM Punk or Edge. That's the one of the That's better. That's actually comparable because yeah. people thought Edge would never return to wrestling. Mm. Never. And we never thought he'd come back. And then he came back and he's put on banger after banger after banger of a match. Yeah. If I had to discuss, if I had to like choose out of those two, I'm going Edge just because Edge came back from a career ending injury. Basically, like this man wasn't supposed to return. Like CM Punk returned after getting his ass beat in the USC. <laughs> That's all we need to know. And Edge, I'm just more of a fan of Edge. So I was just like, and then Edge came back at the Royal Rumble. Like, come on now. That's anytime you come back at the Royal Rumble. And you surprise the fans. That's one of the greatest. That's that's just one of the greatest returns of all time, right there. Exactly. CM Punk is cool though. CM Punk is cool. His his return was definitely better than Bray Wyatt's. But like comparing it to Edge, I'm going. I'm definitely going Edge. Oh my God! You just reminded me of like I was a the year before last year or last year where Brock Lesnar <laughs> answered the Royal Rumble and just won it. Oh man. At the losing earlier that night. Oh, God. oh, that was one of the worst. Like, uh, you just reminded me. I can't believe they did that. Like, <laughs> that's how they led to freaking Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. Like, uh, oh, God. he lost the championship earlier that night to Bobby. 
Um, and then they put him in the freaking Royal Rumble and had him win it all. I'm like, come on, man. Come so what on. Do, what are we doing here, Vince? What are we doing? Come on, man. But speak- only, Oh, wait, wait. Let's not forget. Only to then put Brock Lesnar in the elimination chamber when Bobby got hurt just so he can win the belt back. <laughs> my god man what was going through vince's mind when he thought about this he must have been trying real hard to be like this is how i put both belts on roman it's gonna be good it's like you know exactly this is how you 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 put both belts on roman but you get or you get roman versus freaking brock lesnar and the up that's exactly again again exactly at wrestlemania for the the undisputed championship so that's how you get it, Vince. Mine. That's funny. I forgot about that. Brock did go on to really win the title back, though. <laughs> yeah, remember, bro. Bobby Lashley did not compete in that elimination chamber. He had to walk out. Oh, he was injured at the time. Yeah, Man, it was a whole lot that happened right there that led up to that. But since before that, we was talking about CM Punk. <laughs> AEW's in talks to release CM Punk. Or buy him out or buy his contract out. Tell me your thoughts on this. I believe that's a foolish idea because we can run wild with it. But understandably so, there's some people who are locker room cancers and some people aren't healthy for the system. But in my opinion, I purposely wouldn't let him go unless he wants to be let go. And I feel like another thing is, is like, you know, AEW kind of really does need that star or unless they're going to be really hell bent on building up another star. We can't be relying upon people like, um kenny omega who might be this might be his last run in wrestling because of his current like status and in uh injuries and then you got problematic people who you're you're uh, who you're who are your vice presidents like young bucks is like come on what are we doing and then all right cool now we got chris jericho great you got a guy who's gonna keep you at a very mid-tier status until you get somebody exemplary to go take over which you do have a Daniel Bryan for but you don't use him like that honestly I say keep CM Punk and run a villain storyline do it he'll do you wonders you don't have to give him the belt but you sure as hell can give him that time and spotlight so you can do well in the ratings here's the problem though I think I don't know we don't know if CM Punk wants to even stay though that's the problem. Like, what if CM Punk does want to leave AEW? Then at that point, you basically, you should just buy out his contract, get it over with, get oh, yeah. it over and let him go. But the problem, I mean, the problem is I mean, then it's like, what does CM Punk go from here? I mean, he can do whatever he wants. You know, he was writing comic books in his free time, just, you know, enjoying his life. And on top of that, you know, hey. He's still, he's like, like here's the thing, another thing I can point out about CM Punk. His merch was the number one selling merch on AEW's website for the longest. That dude, that dude is probably been sitting up pretty right now. I think with the best thing that AEW should do, if he doesn't want to stay, buy him out and let him go. If he does want to stay, I say try to do the same thing you did for MGF, you do for somebody else so you can build up more names in your company. Because right now you got a bunch of ex WWE guys who aren't really doing much. Yeah, to me, like, of course, if he wants to stay, well, if he wants to stay, we we was talking about this last week a little bit. I don't know if you keep him though. I'm just like, I mean, I would want to keep him because obviously, CM Punk is a fan favorite. He does wonders for your business, like, but at the same time, in terms of the locker room presence. How does the locker room feel if CM Punk is still there, especially the way everything turned out? The man let everybody know, basically, he cut a freaking real life promo (laughs) during his interviews. Like I watched that. I still watch that to this day. Like I'd be like, dang, this was so entertaining. I mean, (laughs) one thing I don't like about this is like there's nobody likes to throw any of the blame at Hangman Page. They just kind of let that shit slide Mm. because remember, Page, Hangman Page got his feelings hurt. Because he wanted to throw shade at CM Punk for Cole Cabana getting let go by AEW. And that's what started this. That was one of the things that started this. We don't know all the, the backstage factors, but yeah. And then 
we're just gonna be all like hey, hangman page ain't did nothing wrong pretty much i look at him as the catalyst to all this mess mm. could have just been cool but no here we are personally you know if i was aew i I'd be suspending and firing people left and right because this is like this is not a good move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm AEW, it's a tough position because you want obviously you want to keep CM Punk, but you just don't know if it's gonna work out. Um, but if that means CM Punk can make another epic return to the WWE, I'm here for it. You know how you know the, the internet world will be shook. If CM Punk returned back to the WWE. It's like, I don't want to see. I don't know. It's part of me. is like, I don't want to see him in the WWE. But then I'm like, all right, let's just run that idea real quick. Who are you going to have CM Punk wrestle in the WWE? Because I don't want to see Roman. Maybe Seth. I think that would be great. I'll have him go against Seth Rollins. Edge would be good. I'll have him go against Edge. I'll have him go against freaking Cody Rhodes at some point in time. I'll have him go against... You can have CM Punk face anybody. I'll have him face. Why Why wouldn't that work against Roman? Hey, man, we threw him against Dominic Mysterio. That wouldn't be a great situation. <laughs> nah, not Dominic yet. But like Roman, why wouldn't ben that Ballard work? Would be would be very watchable. I'm not going to lie. That's a, to me, that's a WrestleMania worthy match. Roman and CM Punk just from the star power alone. Like you don't yeah, have him get the main event and CM Punk takes that big L. Yeah, CM Punk either takes that L or. If Roman is trying to take some time off, I can see you putting the belt on CM Punk and and letting CM Punk, you know, take the reins over. To me, I don't like CM Punk and Cody Rhodes in terms of star power. I you dang near I still I almost put CM Punk star power in terms of his fans over Cody Rhodes. Even though I would want Cody Rhodes to become champ. If CM Punk returned, that could throw some stuff off. If The Rock is like not considering face, you know, coming back, I'd be like, dang, do I have Ooh. Cody versus Roman or do I have CM Punk versus Roman? I'm gonna throw Cody because even because he was because even so, right? We know Cody's not gonna get injured because that's the one of the worst things about CM Punk ever since. The, the the what's it called the 300 day the what the whole the year long run and he got injured by right back cm punk has been very injury prone so putting the belt on him it's almost as if it's a curse because mm-hmm. he got the belt and seen aew then got it then got immediately injured afterwards all right fast forward he got the belt again and got immediately injured in that same match so it's just like what are we doing here yeah bar an injury though i'm like it becomes a tough question. Cody Rhodes or CM Punk, if CM Punk yeah. returned and The Rock can't face Roman Reigns at this year's WrestleMania, who are you having? Who are you having winning that Royal Rumble? Cody Rhodes or CM Punk to going on to face Roman? <laughs> I, I, shoot. I mean, I would still want Cody, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be like I wouldn't be opposed if Triple H was like, forget it. Let's 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 do CM Punk. Let's do CM Punk instead of Cody. Or do both. CM Punk, Cody versus Roman. Triple threat match. Hey, man. A triple threat match? Do you think they can pull off a good th- triple threat match? That'd be the real question. I could see it, because I'm like CM Punk. I don't I don't know if CM Punk necessarily see, I can't really name the best CM Punk matches, but I don't think he really puts on bad matches. And Cody Rhodes for sure doesn't put on bad matches. And Roman at like freaking this whole title reign, Roman Reigns has been going off. Every match to me he's dang near had has been a good match. So I'm like, I don't see them putting on a bad match with especially when then yeah, I don't see that. And then the lead up to me will be crazy. The build up. Only time can tell because let's just say, for instance, like like this, if that about happens now, that like literally, literally in that time frame, like you know, CM Punk, CM Punk can uh can come in and fill that void where that Cody's like kind of left off on. Imagine a build up around that. Paul Heyman used to be the manager of CM Punk, but now he's with Roman. It's just like so many different elements that would just play with that. It would be it would be crazy. That would be, mm-hmm. I, I could see that working. I could see that working. Even though I'm I'm banking with Cody, 
you know, if The Rock can't make it, but CM Punk will be a valuable option if he was if he was thinking about it. It's all up to him, though. I know the WWE will re- let him return if he actually wants to come back. So I don't know, man. So whenever Triple H, wait, Triple H, and well, actually, wait, Triple said he doesn't have a big problem with with uh, with with CM Punk. It's just that he Punk's kind of a weird guy where he's absurdly quiet until he's cool with you. Mm-hmm. Which is like I get that. That's the way I am. But like when people don't know you like that, you kind of seem a, you kind of seem like a scum. You kind of mean and kind of scummy at times. But no, it's just like I just you know don't don't really vibe with you. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think CM Punk ever had a situation like this when he was in the WWE. The, what's going on with AEW? But um, well, hey man, I'll say it like this: they had a Vince McMahon. None of this would have flew in Vince McMahon. I mean, we had the plane ride from hell, but. A lot of other times, you know, it don't we don't hear anything crazy like this. Yeah, this is this is wild. Speaking of AEW, though, I got to read to you this quote because I thought this was absolutely absurd. Like and I'm a Matt Hardy fan. I'm I got I'm a fan of the Hardy boys, but (laughs) he was talking about Chris Jericho when Chris Jericho made his appearance, you know, and signed with AEW. He basically said Chris Jericho is the same as Hulk Hogan was whenever WCW got hot. So basically he was comparing the two when Hulk Hogan went into WCW is like the same as Chris Jericho going into AEW. I'm going to call Cap and I think this man needs his head check. <laughs> I'm like, Let's see what? if he got CTE because I think what happened was whenever when he got dropped on his head in that one match in the, in the what is it, I think in the parking lot. Just the head hit the head, head hit the uh cement floor. I think they man, I jogged his head, man. I don't think he right in the head, dog. I'm, you know who you know who was like that though? CM Punk. You know who was like that though? When they came when they was announced they're gonna be there? Kenny Omega. Cause I'll say it like this. Kenny Omega wasn't in the WWE, but everybody knew his name. Hmm. Chris Jericho, psh, I guess. Chris don't. Jericho just like, oh hey, that's a nice guy, you know, cool, you know. Don't get me wrong, Chris Jericho's a legend, but the presence is not even comparable. Like Hulk Hogan was at the top, like the biggest babyface, pretty much. Like at one point in time, a better comparison would be but, like, what if like The Rock went to AEW? Yeah, like if The Rock went to AEW, or even. Or better, maybe even make more sense if John Cena right now went into AEW and turned heel <laughs> and started up a freaking group, a faction that would just change the landscape of wrestling history. You get the Monday Night Wars and all that stuff. I'm just like, it ain't no way the same. Like you, it ain't, the presence, like freaking Hulk Hogan going to WCW changed the landscape of wrestling that WCW start winning in ratings. Then we get the freaking attitude era. Then we get all these different things. Chris Jericho going to AEW ain't like it ain't it make us really bad eyes. With- <laughs> Y'all had Chris Jericho this entire time. Y'all could barely pop a rating against Raw or SmackDown. Good job. You beat you beat the developmental program. You beat NXT. With a bunch of guys who, who are trying to get it together. <laughs> man i was like when i heard that i was just like how in the world did we even compare that matt like i like i get it chris jericho's a hall of famer he's a legend it's not the same it's not the same at all it's not no it's not the same it's like this really i like to look at it is hulk hogan was such a big cultural phenomenal icon he's still being referenced to this very day I haven't seen a single Chris Jericho reference outside. If you're not like this, like this, like this, you're not a wrestling fan. You know who Hulk Hogan is. You're not a wrestling fan. You're like, guess what? Hulk Hogan's going to get referenced somewhere else in your media. But Chris Jericho, you only wrestling fans really know about Jericho like that. And, and like the what? The couple hundred, you know, people that know his band. Great. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> And I, I don't want to. Hey, I'm shout out to Chris Jericho though. I think you're a legend. You're a Hall of Famer. But I just, you know, I just disagree with that statement completely. Chris right? Jericho is not the goat. He is not. And Hogan at that Hogan is in that discussion. Even though Pete's not the best in ring wrestler, but when you talk about presence, 
You talk about popularity. You talk about being overall a superstar and your impact in the wrestling world. Yeah. Hogan is definitely in that discussion. So like, yeah, I don't I don't I don't I don't agree with that one. But one more thing I got to say, too. Since we was already kind of we we mentioned a little bit about the developmental league with NXT, I heard that they said next year. I think Shawn Michaels announced that WWE plans to announce NXT Japan and NXT Mexico at some time next year. That sounds about right, due to the fact that uh, Triple H wants to make WWE truly global and have like an NXT everywhere. Mm-hmm. I think that's a smooth move since the, I look at like in it. I look at um NXT UK and I was like, this is a solid show. And I know I know the NXT UK brand, like a lot of people like them a lot. So um I think that'd be a smooth move, especially we can I think in that realm you can open up more doors to having more uh promotion inter more promotions interacting with each other. Cause imagine if we got uh, going like the women from um I think it's called Glam, where it's just, it's like an all female wrestling promotion. Imagine they get to come over and do some stuff in a in a like a, in a Japanese um, uh, in a Japanese NXT, or imagine if we can finally get um, New Japan stuff going on, or even a lot of the Mexican wrestlers, because there's a lot of dudes from Mexico that are just killing it right now. That it would be it would be nice to see them on on a on a on a bigger platform, like a worldwide platform. You know, I think that would be. I think it's sick. I'm like, this is that's a dope idea like man you can start finding more of that that young talent in mexico find another ray mysterio find another eddie guerrero find another like you know wrestler like that and then just finding just great young talent and giving people more opportunities in japan in mexico and then it just it just makes sense it just makes sense and then i i'm like triple h He's doing it again. This man, he he know the game. He know the game. He got the game plan down. And shoot, I'll, I'll be here for it. I want to see the man. That would be crazy. Just seeing like NXT Mexico and seeing. I ah, shoot. I may have to try to go out there, <laughs> go out there and learn a little something, something, and try to uh, and try to shoot, perform. I don't think you can handle it, man. With the rest wrestling in Mexico, man. I want to go out there. A though. lot of injuries, dog. They just you know. They just you know, they get they just get a little bit of alcohol, man. They'd be like, all right, right, same time next week. Yep. <laughs> I want to go out there and kind of learn that that lucha style anyway, and then um, I want to learn it. I want to learn it. That would be pretty crazy, though. That'd be crazy, man. I just I'm here for it, man. NXT out there too, like that's that's dope. That's dope. I want to see it. I'm I'm here for it. Triple H, keep keep doing your thing. Keep doing your thing. Since we was talking about women's wrestling. What do you think about women uh, wrestlers having managers? I think that's a great idea, especially for women who aren't that great talking or don't have like one of those voices that can fulfill the role you want them to. Like imagine like you had like a a girl with a really high pitched voice trying to say, say an intimidating line or even give off like a, a, or give off an aura of dominance. This is going to come off kind of awkward to listen to. So I definitely think giving a woman like a, a, a manager would be great. It's just a matter of like who is going to be the manager per se. Cause I know I understand like, you know, having a man talk for a woman, it's kind of like kind of awkward in certain situations. So it wouldn't be like uh beneficial, but I do think it can help if you get the right person. You know what I'm saying? Cause there are some good female talkers out there. And I just think this takes a, I just think, I just think, it, I just think everybody needs a Paul Heyman, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, uh, or an MVP in their corner. You know what I'm saying? Man, imagine freaking Paul Heyman ma- uh, managing Ronda Rousey. I think that would just take her to a whole nother level. I feel like Ronda is getting better with her promos, but I just still there's still some corniness to it, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I like because like this is another thing, the reason why I like AEW. I really do like uh, Vicky Guerrero as a manager or just somebody in your corner. Cause Vicky, <laughs> she can get she can get put you on a roller coaster of emotion. She can make you angry, happy, sad. She can do it. Especially back on the SmackDown days. You remember when Vicky was in that relationship with Edge back in SmackDown? Yep. I remember oh it. God. Oh man. So I think uh this is I think that's like a that'd be a smooth move. I think uh yeah. I think I think Paul Heyman should be managing Rhonda. And I just want to say that a little bit more because I'm like, man, Rhonda, I don't feel like she she I I, th- I just think it would do justice for her. 
it would take her uh, star power as a wrestler to a whole nother level and just more respect. Like, I feel like putting Paul Heyman with Roman turned Roman Reigns into a whole nother level, a whole nother beast. Putting Roman with, uh, I mean, putting Paul Heyman with Ronda, I think it would do the same thing in terms of the level of respect that we have her. And then, and then she would be able to learn from Paul. She'd be able to learn from him and just get better with the promos, get better just with just being that charismatic superstar. So I want to see it. I want to see more uh, men managing women because I feel like women are on that level now as, uh, you know, they probably always been on that level, but they're being showcased a whole nother, uh, you know, being able to showcase their talent as wrestlers now. So I'm here for it. Let's do a couple um, rapid fires before we uh, before we can end off this show. How are you booking John Cena's heel turn? John Cena returns. How are you booking that? Oh, uh, so he gets to return to the WWE and he gets to be a heel or he can be anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, I really like the idea of John Cena coming back as a heel, but it's like it's a ma- it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's really a, a concept of character because I love the doctor at Thugonomics just because of the fact he was cutting hard on people. But I don't think that do you, I don't think that character would work in 2022 that well. But then again, I don't want John Cena to show up in shades and look like uh look like big time Bex. So if I were to uh if I were to have John Cena return to wrestling like officially, I would definitely love for him to be the almighty gatekeeper of wrestling, where he comes back is similar to like an NWO style where he has a group of people, but they're there to gatekeep people from uh from holding on to belts, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I would like for him to do this and probably either in AEW and and um and put him together with guys who can really hit newer heights like a Swerve Strickland or the guys from Acclaimed or even um even team him up with somebody like uh Hangman Page even. Or if we send him to WWE, I would like for him to be that guy on Raw to really bolster the uh the star power on that show because it feels like Raw is kind of like lacking, especially when it doesn't have Roman Reigns showing up every week. Yeah. I feel like you can dang near start up a group. I feel like John Cena is the the Hulk Hogan of this generation, pretty much, or like or the past generation. Um, I mean, uh, that's how he's been treated, man. Exactly. So I feel like you can just allow him to start up a group and surround him with it, maybe a couple young talent in the group, but I feel like there also got to be like some uh, respected wrestlers in the group too. Um, that's already respected, and allow him to just go like go crazy and take over the WWE landscape. Until maybe a point where, you know, he crosses paths with the bloodline or something like that. But throw John Cena in a suit uh, and allow him to take over. Allow him to be just like this crazy heel um, that's completely against the fans. Like he needs to be like trashing the fans. Go completely against it because he's been so for them for so long. It's like. He got it. He got to turn that around. So, oh. I mean, yeah, I think I think he had, there are a lot of fans out there that were like that would be somewhat shell shocked to see like heel John Cena, but I think a lot of I think the grand majority of fans are uh, could handle such a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. What if John Cena joined Bray Wyatt's <laughs> group? I think they call it the Circle. I don't even know if that's. I think that's the name now. I just hope he ain't doing no mystical, magical nonsense, man. Just have him come out, and be like, "Yeah, I'm like the like the I'm like the final boss. You got to deal with me." <laughs> like, kind of like M. Bison from Street Fighter, or or uh, or uh, or uh, what's it called, or Shao Kong from Mortal Kombat type deal. Have John Cena join Brock Lesnar, and they just freaking. No, that's a group too, man. together. Let's, let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> That'd be too much. <laughs> they would destroy everybody at anything. Um, one more question. Is this the best Seamus we have seen so far? I think this is the best 
that Seamus has had with a spotlight on him. Because I will not lie, throughout the years, Seamus' is like fanfare has been going up and down. But I will say for like as far as like, you know, him being highlighted and having great match at match at the match, I think this is the best. Cause like I noticed when I got back into wrestling, when he was in the bar with Cesaro, I noticed it was like, man, these guys are doing good and they're great wrestlers, and he's getting he's getting a lot more traction and people are making a lot more noise. And I think when they gave him the uh, the other guys from Europe, I think this is where he's like truly been elevated. And on top of that, you know, you're getting a lot more international appeal because you got a lot of the guys from Europe that people want to see together work together. And then on top of that, he's been having great match after great match after great match. So I think this is, might be one of his best years in wrestling, man. I think it's one of his best for sure. This is, man, I've been shouting out Sheamus these last few podcasts. The rivalry he had with Gunther, with the Imperium, I feel like it kind of showcases how great Sheamus has been. Like, just like how physical the matches has been. Um, been five-star matches for the most part to me. And I just think this is, I mean, and then you're starting to see the fans appreciating Sheamus more. The man is getting cheered. Um, for a while, actually, for a while, actually, you know what? Because I, I think back when he was teamed up with Cesaro, too, they was a pretty dope tag team as well. And they was putting on great matches, too. But um, I think this year just seems like he's getting a lot more respect. And I'm starting to see, even for me, I'm like, man, I appreciate Sheamus a lot more. Um, so I'm going I'm to give I'm going to say this is the best year that I've seen from Sheamus. For sure. I know. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. For me, it's because it's like, I remember I was like, you know, kind of dogging him with that match he had with Big E because I was like extremely disappointed. But uh, no, I think this is a, uh, I think this is going to be one of those years to remember about Sheamus and it kind of reminded us about how good Sheamus can be. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of Big E, when is Big E returning? It's, it's seeming like it's weird because he's a part of the, um, He's a part of the staff now, like, you know, the people for relations and talent relations and stuff like that. Because mm. it's looking like Big E might not return to wrestling. Mm, the injury. Yeah, because he got a neck injury. He was fine. And every end up that we've got has been fine. But this is like, if you're right, so how come you haven't returned to TV in some manner? But I guess they're probably saving for the Royal Rumble. Or if not, later on next year, maybe it's a surprise entrance for the money in the bank. Or maybe he just needs some time. <laughs> maybe he just needs some time completely. I mean, yeah, like, neck injury is no joke. Yeah, I think it takes a while for a neck injury. I mean, for you to re, you know fully recover. So, yeah. what's what's a worse injury, like a neck injury or like a torn ACL? Because you can fix both, but it's kind of rough on both sides. I would say a neck injury because nowadays a torn ACL. Some people returning from a torn ACL in like four months. But the new with the new like equipment and just how great um, our medical field has gotten over time. Like, I think a neck injury, though, that's that's rough. That's rough. Even still with how advanced we have become, I think a neck injury, you don't want one of those. I mean, I look at Kurt Angle. I'm like, shoot, he wrestled with a broken neck multiple times. And the worst thing to happen to him is that his knees were messed up. And then I look at um, uh, I look at Soraya, aka Paige. She's back in wrestling, and Edge are back in wrestling. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Well, before we close out the show, tell me your favorite wrestling game from the past. Oh shoot, man! My favorite wrestling games from the past. So definitely, I got to say WWE. SmackDown versus Raw 2005 or 6. And the reasoning why is because that's one of the few games that has an outside wrestling stage. It has, it has everything you wanted from a wrestling game at that time, man. Very good game. 10 out of 10. Out of 10. Go play it. Still, it's, 06, 07, and even 05, in 2005 all still hold up pretty well to this day. There are just some things about them that are lacking, but they improve based upon... They, they, it is one of those few games where the sequel improves upon to the next game. And then, because of you, I'm a fan of Raw, too. 
Like I really am. I just think the only thing stupid about Raw too is you gotta go through someone's bag to go get their clothing to go get so you can use them as a custom character or to unlock it for them. Like, come on now. Imagine you see Sean no not Sean Michaels. Imagine looking at Roman Reigns having to go through Goldberg's bag just to get some stuff. Like you look so stupid. Oh man. Man, I remember the Raw two days. I created so hey, if people I created so many people in freaking Raw 2, and not only just me, but I feel like everybody participated in just creating so many people over the years in Raw 2 that we had family members, uh, freaking friends, you know, and I'm talking about characters that looked like them, too. Like, we created so many people, and, you know, and then when you play Raw 2, Everybody just doing their own thing, getting titles, having factions. It was crazy. I, I did a lot with Raw 2. And then I lost all of it, I think, because my Xbox broke. Like It finally died. It finally died. And it's like, dang, I created all those people. I could dang there, because I've dang there would go back and do a gamer video and show y'all all of those things. Like I created so many people and we created so many people over time. Um, so definitely Raw 2 is one of mine. SmackDown, just bring it. Uh, SmackDown, here comes the pain. Uh, For me, you you said, was good. What's up? K, oh, you said it too. SmackDown versus Raw 2006. I remember back in the day, used to play that one on PSP. And, uh, and you know, all the kids from nowadays, all the young kids don't even know what a PSP is. But... Yes, a PSP. The GM mode was that's the first game that had GM mode on there. Mm-hmm. That one was fire. That one was fire. So that yeah. would be my ones right there. Yeah, I think uh, another one I liked was I think it was 2012 or 2K14, where you can make your own storyline mm. from like piece to piece, part to part. You can do it. So virtually, you can make your own show from start to finish. And I like that about I like that a lot. I wish I wish they would bring that back along with GM mode. I mean, we have GM mode, but I want that with GM mode. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And after all those think, years, um, yeah. Another wrestling game I like was 2K16 because it got me back into wrestling, got me into the sphere of it. And um, something about that game was just magical, man. The controls were right. I didn't experience a lot of glitches, but I did lose my save data twice. And on top of that. It was, yeah, I guess it really what it was, it was the, it was the Stone Cold Steve Austin showcase. So it just made it even more of like a very magical time for me to play that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, I guess I'll throw, I don't know, the one I like right now is 2K22 due to the fact, hey, man, I keep coming back to that game. It's fun. I got that game and I have never played it yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got to play it. What are you doing? <laughs> It's been out for almost a year. You haven't touched it? All these years, I finally wanted them to bring GM mode back, and I'm not even playing it. I am. Oh, man, I am so befuddled right now. Like, how? How does the GM mode even look on there? Like, It's interesting because it's like when you do GM mode, you kind of start out small scale, and you got to be like, you're really paying for, like, your venue, your promotions, how big your pay-per-view is going to be, because you're going to be really wrestling in – in uh what's it called uh gymnasiums and stuff like that <laughs> and even i think there even is like a little parking lot outside you can hold a venue at is there um, is there a way where we can play gm mode as like a gamer video uh yeah 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 you know where that parsec thing i was telling you about uh-huh yeah we can make that work with that yeah. oh yeah we got to do that then we got to do that that's that's a, let's let's bring gm mode back let's bring yeah it. All right. And if not, um, you got an Xbox One, right? Yeah, yeah, I could probably make it work with the Xbox One too. So we, we just gotta, we gotta just get the, the technical details out the way, but we can make this work. We can make it work, and then y'all tune in to our GM mode. I remember back in the day, we used to play. Uh, it used to be three man GM mode with me, you, and Frank with freaking SmackDown Raw and ECW. That was another one too. ECW only had one title though. Like it was hard to even compete in when you had when he was on ECW. But oh yeah, I think that was two thousand and eight. Two thousand yeah, I think it was just rough because it's like you got three guys who are very competitive and want the best show. But it's just like God dang, once you steal like 
Stone Cold, The Rock, Bret Hart, and Shawn Michaels. It's like, oh, man, how do we feel out the rest of this roster? Man, everybody else was garbage. <laughs> you got RVD and Kane? Like, Jesus Christ, what are we doing? Batista and and Carlito is our next show. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. We definitely got to bring back GMO. That's getting me excited again. I remember. I remember those days. All right. Yeah, we got to bring it back. Had the legends on there, too. All right. Oh, man. The legends on GMO is kind of wild because they're free agents, right? But they're super expensive contracts. And you can't even like have them for a whole year unless you're really balling like that. Hmm. Yeah, ain't no cheat codes to get that done. <laughs> Shoot. Get some more money. I'll have to play it some more, and I'll let you know, but it's it's kind of rough. I had to rock on my show for about three months. I couldn't afford them. Oh, dang. That's a, it's unrealistic. Oh, yeah. We definitely got to play that one. Um, but that being said, you got any closing words for the people? Only thing I can say for the people is, hey, man, keep doing your thing and keep going hard in the paint. Cause you know, you keep doing that, man. You will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also one more thing. Hey, good job. 49ers getting blown out. It was one of the best weekends we had in a long time <laughs> as a Raiders fan. Just watching y'all get folded. <laughs> I'm going to let you get that one. Uh, Niners. Um, matter of fact, Niners, y'all need to go and try to sign OBJ. Go ahead and bring Odell Beckham to the Niners. Give Jimmy G no reason to fail. No reason at all to fail. We got Debo. We got Christian McCaffrey. We got too much on that offensive power right now. Top of that, y'all defense is actually pretty good too, but you know. Exactly. Our defense <laughs> how, how competitive can Jimmy Garoppolo make that be if he's throwing interceptions and stuff like that? Let's just keep it a buck. Sign Odell and give Odell. Uh, Jimmy G, no reason to fail. This is his last opportunity. This is his last chance. Let us lead us to the Super Bowl, man. I can't wait to New Year's Day when it's the Niners versus the Raiders, though. New Year's Day in Vegas. Niners Shoot. will take out those Raiders. Shoot. Stop the cap. You know you ain't winning that. Yeah. We got Devontae Adams, man. Darren Waller is probably going to be back. And then on top of that, man. Our defense is actually clicking. Like uh, y'all got very subpar to mid to below average Jimmy Garoppolo as quarterback. I don't think y'all went in that. Dog. He said subpar We're to gonna, mid. Gotta be to throwing up average. points, man. <laughs> we it's gonna probably look like a basketball score, man. God dang, that's how bad it's gonna be. And that being said, shout out to my Lakers. Make sure you trade Russell Westbrook. Uh, we love you, people. Yeah. Let us know what we should talk about next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chain, yeah sh- Trey Westbrook. Trey Westbrook, please. 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 This is the People's Podcast presented by the Wrestling Republic. Make sure you check out their website as well um, and all their social media platforms. And follow us, too, on all social media platforms. What up, Meech? Um, and DJ's One Heart. And I'm not even sure what your Instagram is, John, but <laughs> Midnight, Mr. Midnight's or something like that. Yeah, Mr. Midnight's. That being said, we out. See you in the next pod.